Hey now, today I am in a bit of a prequel mood because I'm shooting a video um, about how to make a Portuguese presunto. I did a video, one of the first ones that I shot was about uh, how to dry age a presuntini, which is a small version of a Portuguese presunto and sort of like a Portuguese version of a presuntini, um, which is an Italian meat. Uh, but what I've got today here is um, a cut of pork from a pig that I butchered yesterday. And this is actually the same cut that you, you would use for a culatello. So it's coming from the ham, the back leg of the pig. Um, and it's just a really nice cut. It's really a couple of muscles together, which is why I've got it trussed together like this, so that there can be no, uh, hopefully no molding issues or anything in any sort of air pockets. Um, if you do see my Prisantini video though, this is a much larger cut that I'm doing for this. This is sort of like a mid-range size. Not quite as big as a full Prisuntu, because I would use a full leg. Now, anyway, what I've got here for seasoning is it's really quite basic. I'm going with 2% salt, and I'm using pickling salt for that, because that's what I had on hand. I'm going with 2% uh, Portuguese paprika, and I'm just going to mix that together. And then I've got 0.25% uh, cure number two. A decent amount of that cure number two, and um, this is designed to uh, be a, a nice lengthy uh, curing and aging process. So I'm just going to mix this together. And then I am going to, of course, spill a little bit. Okay, I'm going to put it over top of the pork here. And I'm going to start to spin it around and just give it a nice solid rub all over the place. This is a lot of paprika. Um, but that's sort of the point. Get it all over here. And that'll be a really nice uh, initial coating of the seasonings on this. This is going to cure for at least 40 days uh, based on the, the weight and the size of this. So I've got this roast essentially covered up now here and it's going to, uh, <laughs> I'm going to struggle trying to get into a vacuum seal bag because I don't have any of my extra large bags left. Um, and then once I've got it in there, I'm going to take all of this extra uh, cure seasoning blend and add it in there too because of course you don't want to leave any of this behind because it's required in order to cure it. So I'm going to, uh, Get this into the bag and we will look at it in a sec. All right, there we go. So I uh, had to get a little bit creative here and made an extra large bag out of uh, two pieces that I turned into bags and then used this tuck tape to make it into one giant bag. Um, that makes a permanent bond so that will work and it seems to be holding the vacuum nicely. So anyway, I'm going to give this 40 days and then when we come back it will be time to get this thing rubbed up, wrapped and then dry aging. So for our next phase here, I'll just show you the tools that I've got. So I've got some nice, uh, some nice wide netting and that's how we're going to hang uh, the meat in the curing chamber. I've got a little piece of string because I'm just going to attach the label, which I'll write on this super fancy painter's tape. I'm going to use half inch hog rings just to seal up the collagen, or sorry, the, uh, the netting after the meat's wrapped in the collagen casing. Uh, I've got some vinegar that I'll use just to spray stuff down and kind of prevent any uh, initial mold growth. Uh, hog ring pliers uh, and then a sausage pricker that I'll use on the uh, collagen casing just to help eliminate any possible air pockets. And of course a pair of scissors, which we're about to use. All right, so we've had 45 days and this is very well cured. And let's take a peek at it here. Nice. Okay, so all that paprika and everything's all caked on there. So I'm gonna give this a solid rinse, just try to get a bunch of the stuff off. Um, prior to getting it wrapped up in the uh, in the collagen casing. All right, so I decided I did want to add another paste to this while it's dry aging. So what I did here is, this is a half cup of a red wine. I used a Malbec because that's what I had on hand. This was three tablespoons of paprika, two tablespoons of garlic powder. And as you can see, it's a nice little paste. So I'm gonna add this to it, and it's sort of similar to what I do with my Capicola, um, where I add a nice uh, hot pepper paste to that during the dry aging process in the curing chamber. You can check out my video on that if you want. Um, for now though, I'm just going to totally coat this. Get it all nicely rubbed down. And I don't want like too thick of a layer of it either, but just enough that it's going to continue to be infusing flavor into the meat during the uh, months that it is losing its weight. All right. A little bit wrapped around there. Perfect. So you can see just a bit of a skiff of that paste on here. So now it's going to go onto this collagen sheet. And just set it onto there. And then before I work with the sheet itself, I'm just going to wash my hands up here. Okay, so I'm all nice and clean. I'm going to get this on here. And the trick is to try to get it 
as tight to all of the terrain of the meat as possible. Don't want there to be any air pockets as that can then result in mold underneath the casing, which is basically impossible to deal with. Um, and you might not even notice it. So I've kind of squeezed out as much as I possibly can. I am going to take a sausage pricker to this and uh, just kind of poke those out after I've got it in the netting. So now that I've got this kind of laid out like so, it's going to kind of eyeball the length here, giving it some extra, because the last thing I want to do is get the netting on there and then realize I'm a little short on length. Okay, just like that. And then start it up here. Nope. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna flip it this way and go with a slightly narrower end. That'll make it easier to get this going. Roll it on up. And I'd like to have it bunched up like that because then it makes it quite a bit easier to just convince it to roll over top here. Of course, as I say that, it becomes impossible. There we go. Okay, now it looks like somehow during all of that, I managed to accidentally unroll just a little bit. So I'm just going to tuck that back over top. Perfect. The nice thing about this netting is not only is it going to hold the weight of this um, with the S-hook when it's in the curing chamber, but it also will help this kind of keep the shape that I want it to. So I'll just go through here, look for spots where there might be a little bit of air hidden underneath. Not too many, really. It's just more likely in these nooks and crannies. I'm just gonna kind of poke there. Yeah, definitely a couple there. Sweet. Okay, so now I'm going to just tie that up using half inch sausage ring, or sorry, uh, hog clamp. <laughs> and same on the other side here. Once this is on here, I'll do a, a final inspection for any possible air pockets, and then I'll get this down to the curing chamber. Yeah, you're good. Okay, I forgot to mention I also weighed this out. So we got the original weight on there, and then I did a weight with 40% uh, weight loss on there. Now, um, as I usually do, I'm just going to give this a nice spritz down with some vinegar. Um, I wasn't super concerned about, uh, you know, having all my surfaces sanitized and prepped and stuff uh, when I was getting this um, ready upstairs. So this is just going to kind of wipe the slate clean, make sure that there are no, uh, you know, sort of uh, undesirable molds or anything like that that could potentially take hold here. And I can always add mold to it uh, just down the road. Okay, so got my hook on. This in the curing chamber. So this is set at uh, 55, um, 55 degrees Fahrenheit. And I've got it at 75% RH. So this is probably going to be uh, at least a few months before I bother to check, uh, check the weight on it there. But for now, it's just going to be happily doing its thing. So I just pulled my sweet meat out here. I was looking for 28.58. I've just uh, slightly overshot my weight there, which is fantastic. So we are ready to prep this for the next phase of equalization. I'm going to go ahead and remove this netting here. Slide that right off. So this was actually just a few days shy of three months in the curing chamber. I pretty much called the amount of time it would take. Um, all right, here we are. Now, taking a look at this. So there is also, I'm gonna cut off this string that we'd use to try to bind things together a little bit better. Just make a few cuts here. See how much I need to pull this off. Okay, there we are. That was a little more difficult than I'd been anticipating. Oh, looks like there's actually a little chunk. 
There we go. All right, perfect. Now, I'm just going to slide this into the vacuum seal bag. Clean up my hands once again. Now I'm going to vacuum seal this here. And so this is going to let this meat equalize nicely. And so while it's vacuum sealed like this, it'll probably be, uh, given the size of this, I'll probably let it sit for three months just to make sure that if there is any uh, variance between the exterior and the interior of this meat for uh, insofar as like the moisture content, it should be able to equalize and sort of redistribute a little bit. And I am just trying to double seal this just to make sure that there's no chance that a seal pops while I'm not paying attention and then allows air and stuff to get in here causing mold issues and possible spoilage and what have you. So anyway, I'm going to throw the date on this and get it into the keyser just to keep it nice and cold while that's happening. All right, so it's been five months, which is more time than I needed for this to equalize. Uh, probably two or three would have done it. However, I've been very patient. So I'm going to uh, cut this in half here and let's start to slice. All right, I didn't cut it in half. I cut it like this because this one's just going to go back in packaged. Um, and what have you, but check that out. That is so beautiful. I cannot wait to try this. Let's run this through the slicer. Ooh, look at these slices. Let's get some more. Check out that super, super beautiful thin slice of this presunto. I'm going to rip it in half because I don't know if I can get the whole thing in there. People are making fun of me right now because I'm enjoying this so much. Mm. Such a, a light, delicate flavor. It's got a little bit more than the than uh, like a prosciutto because of the uh, oba paprika, the garlic, everything that's going on in there. It is incredibly delicious. Mmm. And just lightly sliced like that, or thinly sliced, it's going to go amazing on the charcuterie board that we're making for tonight. Oh, I found that other little nug. Mmm. Amazing. Now before people uh, steal the rest of it from me, uh, I'm going to run and grab some. So keep it at eleven. <laughs> 